Today we're going to talk about preparing your legacy e-learning courses for a world that doesn't include Flash. So it's a new year, 2020, and it got me to thinking about my history as an e-learning designer developer. When I first started uh, getting into designing and developing e-learning, of course, everything was published to Shockwave Flash or SWF format. In other words, it would play within the Flash Player plugin inside your learner's browser. And it worked fine. It was okay for what we were doing at the time. But obviously in this post-Flash world that we now find ourselves in, um, it's not going to cut it anymore. And 2020 marks the final year that Adobe is going to support Flash Player and continue to update it and support it. So December 31st, I believe, is the exact final date. So you got one year to get your all, all your legacy courses migrated over to HTML5. And uh, I wanted to share with you today a very simple process that you can use to check if you have unsupported Shockwave Flash or unsupported content that's not going to work for HTML5. So I have literally the oldest course that I could find that I developed uh, in my history on the screen right now. You can see that this was copyright 2011, so it's quite a few years ago now. And uh, actually it turns out that it wasn't too bad. It was uh, not too difficult to uh, convert this to HTML5, but there are a couple of objects that are incompatible. And here's how you find them. You go into your project drop-down menu and you select HTML5 tracker, and that's gonna open up this little window right here. And it's going to list all of the unsupported slides or objects, as you can see here. Fortunately for me, this is all isolated to a single slide. If you click on any one of these objects, it will jump immediately to that particular slide and select the object in question. So uh, on this slide, you can see here I have a bunch of different uh, animations. They're Shockwave Flash-based animations. Uh, and they're just uh, to show emphasis. They're, they're little uh, animated arrows that point at the various objects here. So you have a decision to make. You can either simply delete them, uh, which is what I'm going to do in this case here. Uh, let's delete those. Or you could uh, alternatively replace them with something similar. And this might be useful to have uh, your timeline open for this. So for example, uh, let's find something here I haven't already deleted. So here are, uh, across the top here, I've highlighted the tabs across the top in this course by using the animated arrows. So all I really need to do is find a similar appropriate arrow that I can use uh, to replace that. So let's uh, select the appropriate point on the timeline. And I'm just going to select the arrow item here. We'll just draw it anywhere on the screen here. And we'll just do a few um, customizations there. Uh, we obviously need it to be just for the duration of the original flash items. And we can customize it as we see fit here. So maybe what I'll do is I'll make it a little smaller and set it up. And of course, I can place it in position at the appropriate spot delete my original shockwave flash items. And then once I've eliminated all of those flash items, which I'll do right now here just to show you, we'll select each of those, delete, click OK. And I think there's one more on the screen here, delete. And now you can see that the HTML5 tracker is clean of unsupported slides or objects and we would be okay to go ahead and publish this project now. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share with your colleagues. If you need help with your next e-learning project, hire me. My focus is to create effective e-learning that achieves your business goals. Visit my website at CaptivateTeacher.com and don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel.